Good morning and welcome to the International Church of Shanghai Sunday Service. My name is Chin Tak and a very warm welcome to all our online viewers. At this point in time, we continue to worship virtually as we await the restart of our church. As soon as we hear any further news, we will let you know. So we ask for your ongoing patience and most importantly, we ask for your continued prayers. And uh, just a re gentle reminder that ICS is a multi-denominational Christian church. In compliance with local government regulations, ICS online services and events are only open to holders of foreign passports only. And to start the announcements, um, if you're watching this for the first time, or if you're new to our church and want to get involved, we run 20 cell groups around the city on a weekly basis. So if you want to find out more about these cell groups or want to get connected, please contact cell groups at icshq.org and the church staff will be happy to reach out to you to get you connected. Our youth continues to meet via Zoom until church services resume. If you would like to be involved but haven't already, we encourage you to email anchor at icshq.org to be part of anchor. Last but not least, we love to thank all our members for your tithes and offerings. It makes a real difference not only to the operations of our church, but also allowing us to be blessed, to bless the community around us. You can find details of our bank accounts on the screen. Have a blessed Sunday, worshipping the Lord, and uh, we hope to see you very, very soon. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning and welcome. It's time to praise and worship the Lord. Amen. 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 Come, let's, let's just pray before the Lord. Father, we thank you that this is a new day, a brand new day that you have made. And Lord, we will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we just ask that you allow us to come into your presence uh, with praise and with thanksgiving for all that you have done and for all that who you are, Lord. So Lord, we just ask that you, you fill this place with your Holy Spirit receive all that we're about to offer you lord and we pray all this in the name of jesus amen amen good morning everyone good morning and welcome it's time to praise and worship the lord amen amen come let's pray for the lord father we thank you that this is a new day a brand new day that you have made and i'm casting this is my fears aside i'm leaving my past behind in my heart and my heart you, Jesus. I'm reaching my hand to yours, believing there's so much more, knowing that all you have in store for me is good. It's good to take this day you have me. I will rejoice and be glad in Today is the day you have me. I will rejoice and be glad in this. I won't worry about tomorrow, trusting in what you say. Today is the day. I put in my fears, leaving my doubts. Oh 
know my days I live for you. Rejoice and be glad in your name. Today is the day you have me. I will rejoice and be glad in your name. I won't worry. I won't worry about giving you my fears, fears and sorrows. Where you lead me, I will follow. I'm trusting in what you say.
to your presence because in your presence we find peace in your presence we find you our center
在你同在里，在你同在里，一直永留，有恩典无止境，我俯伏祭拜你。
是翱翔，每个呼吸围绕。Father, we praise you and thank you for this opportunity that we can worship you together online in spirit and in truth. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness in journeying with us every day, Father. We want to pray for those who have lost their loved ones in Indonesia due to the aircraft crash. We ask that, Lord, your grace will be with them and that, Father, you will journey with them through life losses. Father, we continue to pray for the rollout of the vaccination. I pray that there will not be any adverse reaction in all those people who will be vaccinated in the different countries. We give you praise and thanks that we can continue to worship you with our tithes and our offering. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. There are healthy and unhealthy stress in our lives. All of us have different thresholds when it comes to handling stress in our lives. We will face very different kind of stress at different stages of our lives. We will face the stress of examination for primary school to university. Of course, it is not as stressful for talented and gifted students, but they might face some stress in interpersonal relationships. One of the stress faced by third culture kids is the moving away from their friends when the parents are posted to another country or the need for re repatriation. Some might find it stressful when it comes to applying for a job after graduation except for those who are headhunted before graduation. There might be some who are stressed out as different industries recover from the effect of COVID-19. Some might feel stressed when they are still single at 28 years old or others at mid-30s, depending on the country and the cultural background. There will be those who are stressed out by mar marital issues or how to handle a newborn. Then there will be those who are stressed out by midlife identity crisis and hormonal changes. The list goes on. So how do we handle all these stresses with the Word of God? There are many examples in life, so let us zoom into one example. 
Let me invite you to watch a short trailer, The Company Man. Up, 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 let's go. This is called the tiger. We do it when we need to get our energy up. Come on, no use sitting around feeling sorry for ourselves. I will win. Why? Because I have faith, courage, enthusiasm. Good. Maybe we'll take a guess at what I shot at the club this morning. What happened? Somebody die? What's going on? The company's consolidating divisions. Difficult decisions had to be made in areas where redundancy surfaced. You're firing me? 3,000 jobs. They were good people, Jim. Hell, it's a business, not a charity. I've always told you what I thought, right or wrong, and this is wrong. We'll wait for a meeting. Got one kid in college, another one going in the fall. I won't go back to a factory floor. I'll take an AK-47 to this place first. Mr. Walker, can I speak here for a moment? I just got thrown off the course of the club. What, you're playing golf? You getting your Porsche detailed? I need to look successful. Hi, Sally. Thanks for not returning any of my phone calls. If you do return my call, I would love to know why you fired me without any notice. You cowardly witch. <laughs> oh, see, wonder why she never calls you back. <sighs> Feels good, though. Would you do the honors? Dear God, please help my dad find a job so he won't be unhappy all the time. OK. You know, things get tough. You can always use some extra help this winter. Easy work, huh, Bobby? Pretty much like moving coffee boards from the inbox to the outbox. I hate your brother. We can get through this. I'm a 37-year-old unemployed loser. You have Drew and Carson and me. You have me. We could make something here. Start out with a crazy plan. Start slow. See if it'll grow. You in? You should take that job. You're a terrible cop. <laughs> Why? Because I have faith, courage, enthusiasm! I will win! I'm confident that most of us will be familiar with some of the scenes found in the trailer if we have worked in the corporate world long enough. It is never easy for the human resource director to deal with the situation when there, whenever there is a restructuring because we are dealing with individuals and their families that are affected by the decision of the company. Some may see it coming because of the bad business environment, but it might come as a surprise for others. Ben Affleck, who played the leading role in this movie, was caught off guard. He is blessed to have a supportive, encouraging and understanding wife when he was struggling with being made redu redundant. It isn't always the case in real life. The most difficult part was when the daughter prayed for the father to get a job so that he won't be unhappy all the time. It started to affect the daughter. He went through a pre period when he needed to make himself look successful in front of others by maintaining the lifestyle. There would be this period of denial and struggle until reality sets in. He had to humble himself to do some laborious job to support the family. It was an emotional roller coaster for him because it was too big an adjustment. His identity as a corporate man was lost. It was a humbling experience and it was quite a wait for the restoration. In fact, the higher we are in the corporate world or any organization, it will be difficult for us to make the adjustments. Beside COVID-19 situation, there will be adjustment as artificial intelligence begins to take over some jobs, the introduction of 5G technology, and the phasing out of old skills. It will need many of us to make the adjustments regardless of our age. All of us will go through this struggle during the period of transition, regardless of genders or whether we are married or single. In fact, some of these struggles can also be identified in our children, especially teenagers, as they go through the process and adjustment with the family. We need to help them and, and ourselves to have the proper coping mechanism found in the Bible, which, can be, which will be covered today. In fact, we should get all this sorted out before any unforeseen circumstances happen and prayerfully it doesn't happen to us. Let us look at a passage of Scripture. Turn with me to 1 Samuel 22, verse 1 
to verse 5. 1 Samuel 22, verse 1 to verse 5 says, David therefore departed from there and escaped to the cave of Adullam. So when his brothers and all his father's house heard it, they went down there to him. And everyone who was in distress, everyone who was in debt, and everyone who was discontented gathered to him. So he became captain over them, and there were about 400 men with him. Then David went from there to Mizpah of Moab, and he said to the king of Moab, Please let my father and mother come here with you, till I know what God will do for me. So he brought them before the king of Moab, and they dwelt with him all the time that David was in the stronghold. Now the prophet Gad said to David, Do not stay in the stronghold, depart and go to the land of Judah. So David departed and went into the forest of Horeb. Praise God. This passage found David in the darkest moment of his life when he was hiding in the cave of Adullam. This scene is unthinkable because of the meteorite rise of David from the background of an unknown shepherd boy to the well-known, most talked about giant slayer and a person who killed tens of thousands in battles. He was the hero of the nation. David was adored by the women and admired by the men for being a man of war. Not forgetting, he has been anointed with the next king of Israel. It was a huge curveball that came into his life. The route of ascension to the throne to be king of Israel was not as smooth as one would have thought despite of God's appointment and anointing. Well, things like this do happen in life, including ours too. Before I go any further, I would like to emphasize that while I'm teaching from the Old Testament passage, there's a huge difference in regards to our position before God after Jesus' work of redemption on the cross as compared to David. Therefore, we are operating in a much better position than David and will be able to face any situation better. It is always wise to look at the Old Testament through the work of the cross and how it is applicable to us than to take its contact without considering the new covenant. I will bring out the difference in the sermon today. What is a cave of Adullam experience in our lives? Let me give you an example. You might have been promised a promotion a career path clearly marked out for you, or even identified as a global talent to be groomed to take major appointments in a multinational company that you work for. Maybe the current situation is a far cry from what you have been promised, either due to COVID-19 or any unforeseen circumstances. You have been placed in this position for some time, seems being sidelined instead of being promoted as promised. You feel you are in the cave of Adullam, Lonely, cold, isolated. The first key to handling stress is to stay humble. Verse 1a says, David therefore departed from there and escaped to the cave of Adullam. Let me also bring to you 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 13 says, Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. David was anointed and called by God to be the next king of Israel. If you are to take time to study the life of David, you will realize that David was never in a hurry to assume the role of the king. It is really an emotional roller coaster experience for David, even though he is an unassuming young man. He would have continued to serve King Saul faithfully until it is the right time for his ascension to the throne if it's not for the latter's insecurity. David stayed humble and um, submitted to God's timing. He has done everything right, including having his heart in the right place and a close walk with God. Nevertheless, it is still incomprehensible for David, who did all things right, including showing respect to God's anointed, to find himself hiding in the dark, cold, damn cave for three to six months without knowing what's going to happen to him. It was the lowest point in his life. This is not supposed to be the case because he is clearly anointed to be the next king. I'm sure some of us have similar incomprehensible experience too. We need to take heart that even though we are in a similar situation because it is all is not lost, a detour doesn't mean we will not get to the final destination. Despite being hunted, 
persecuted by King Saul and hiding in a cave, David's mind wasn't preoccupied with how to take revenge on King Saul who threw the spear at him even when David was serving him faithfully. He wasn't even concerned about how he was going to ascend to the throne from the cave of Adullam. He wasn't concerned about his career-ending path. In fact, while we are hiding in the cave, while he was hiding in the cave, he wasn't even sure whether King Saul has killed his family completely. It must have been a mental torment for him being separated from his family who lives in Beth Bethlehem. After being assaulted by King Saul, he escaped alone to the cave of Adullam, which is very near to the Philistine camp. I believe the location is a deterrent for Saul to pursue him just in case he runs into an unnecessary battle with the Philistine. There is no place to go except this cave so that he will be able to take some time to process and seek the Lord. David's time in the cave taught him how to tackle the darkest and most difficult time of his life. The interesting thing about this cave is it is big enough for David's family and the 400 men. Of course, there are smaller caves that surrounded this cave of Adullam. He was accompanied by people who are in debt, distress, and discontented instead of commanding the thousands in the army. In fact, these 400 men were going through their own cave of Adullam experience because they were in debt, distress, and discontented. David will not be able to lead this man unless he's able to have a breakthrough from his cave of Adullam experience. One can imagine the kind of atmosphere he was dealing with despite of his own setback in life. I mean, he cannot even return to tending the sheep for his father. Everything seems to have fallen apart in his life. Do you think that only adults go through a cave of Adullam experience? Let me give you an example. We have mostly third culture kids in ICS. They are very blessed to have lived in different countries and studied in different international schools before coming to Shanghai. Some of them are driven around by drivers, hang out at Starbucks, eat at good restaurants. They are given a good living allowance even though they are in school. They will be brought to the US, Europe and Asian countries for vacation probably once, twice or many times in a year. Whether subtly or subconsciously, this lifestyle will become a strong part of their identity. It is the lifestyle of the expatriate children. They live in a bubble. While we should live, love our children and should provide for them, but we should help them to have a healthier identity that will help them weather through difficult times of their lives as they grow up to face the real world. Now, let me share with you a real story that happened more than 18 years ago. A youth with similar background as described above, went through a rough patch when his parents lost everything due to a bad investment. They literally went from riches to living with the bare necessity in life. They had to sell their luxury cars, their houses, stop all overseas holidays and downgrade to a small two-bedrooms apartment. They had to take public transport, which is something that he has never used, used to. The sad thing is, this youth stopped talking to his dad because he felt that his dad is a loser and failed to continue to provide for the lifestyle that he had. He was resentful and rebellious. He was growing through his personal cave of Adulam experience. What could have been done and taught before this cave of Adulam experience to this youth? What kind of identity should we teach and inculcate into his life? Honestly, it will be a double whammy if the parents are to struggle with the same identity crisis if they have not built their foundation in Christ correctly. If this is the case, then the family will either take a long time to pick themselves up or will be completely destroyed due to one financial crisis. Our children are growing up much faster than we think in terms of their emotional, intellectual and spiritual being. They have their own struggle and it is real. In fact, some of them might not verbalize it to you because they might not feel comfortable in doing it or they are just very reserved by nature. Therefore, it is with their struggles, the pressure that they face and the need for conformity to the world that we at ICS is launching a once-a-month pre-teens trailblazer program to journey and address some of the relevant issues faced by the young people of today. We are working hand-in-hand hand 
with the parents like you, who spend most of the time with them to ensure that they have a positive voice of influence. The Trailblazer program will cover topics that's relevant to them and guide them to think biblically regarding how to respond in different situations and environments that's contrary what, to what they have been taught at home or in church. Do help your 10 to 14 years old kids sign up for this program. Have you ever felt like David, who is alone in a cold, dark, and moist cave of Adullam, though not literally? Let me give you an example. You might have been a corporate person who has gone into a different season of your life. You are staying home to look after your kids. It is too drastic a change in lifestyle for you, and there's a struggle with the new identity. All of a sudden, you are doing the laundry, running the errands for the family, and being alone at home when the children are away in school. You feel that in, you are in a cave of Adulam. You feel alone in a cold, dark, and moist example. Let me give you another example. You know, I have a chance to get to know some of the uh, young people who does modeling. And uh, it is a very glamorous lifestyle because people praise you for how you look, how you dress, and the figure that you have. It is glam it's a glamorous lifestyle because you get all the attention from people. But what if one day you are no longer in a good figure, you are no longer invited to go for all the shows, and you are forgotten, you feel lonely, stuck at home, nobody calls you for, for shows, and you begin to question yourself, who are you really? These people go through their own cave of Adulam experience they will not be able to have a breakthrough unless they know who they are in Christ. These people will feel rejected. They will find all means to make themselves slim again. And that's where they go into problems of uh, having, you know, eating disorder. And uh, sometimes they will hurt themselves out of frustration and uh, trying to get attention. Let me tell you, if you are that person going through this right now, you need to have that breakthrough, continue to listen to this sermon and get your identity right in Christ. Or maybe you have the ideal and wedding marriage partner for life in mind, but you are still single now. You have a certain plan in mind and also at an age where you will be getting married. You are probably at a certain age, but there is no one suitable in sight. Maybe you have just experienced being rejected or broken up in a relationship with someone. You feel you are in your cave of Adulam. You feel alone in this cold, dark, and moist atmosphere at home. Let us be very honest. It is very easy to survive in the environment where we are doing well in every aspect of our lives. However, it is a very different story and also critical for us to know how to react while we are alone in the cave of Adulam in life. The point is, if we are able to survive our own cave of Adulam experience, then we will be able to survive every situation that we face in life. Trust me, if you are not able to learn how to handle, to have a breakthrough in your cave of Adulam experience, then you will probably not be able to help your family members, including your children when they are faced with a similar situation of a or a situation of a different scale. We are a very different person we are made when we are made redundant or as compared to when we are at the top of the corporate ladder. I have witnessed and journeyed with many individuals throughout my 20 years in ministry. I am confident that the Bible has the answer for us regarding how to manage the stress points as we wait for the turnaround in the situation. I, felt, I feel led to cover this topic so that we know how to deal with it victoriously and reign in life in the event that it happens or Use it as a way to minister to others if the opportunity arises. The second key to handling stress is knowing who you are. Who are you? What is your identity? Can you imagine if David was hung up with the calling that he has to be the next king of Israel? Can you imagine if all he sought after were the praises of the people? Can you imagine if he's still craving after the adoration of the man as a man of war and the adoration of women as a mighty conqueror? Can you imagine if he still thinks and longs to be the captain of thousands while he is still stuck in the cave of Adullam? If David had chosen to be identified with all that he had in the past, then he would have lost his 
identity completely. It is a far cry from his prime just about a year ago. He will feel very miserable because of all these were not available when he was alone in the cold, empty, moist cave of Adullam. He will be struggling, feeling impatient to get back to the limelight and to take over the throne as soon as possible. Honestly, this is exactly what most of us will be feeling and if we are struggling to get back to the corporate world or to get back to the limelight, to the prime of our lives, it will get worse until the restoration comes. Unfortunately, restoration will not come as fast as we would like it to be. Maybe you are used to be leading hundreds, if not thousands of fellow colleagues, but you are an entrepreneur or working in a startup with no, not many people to work for you or even do things for you now. It is your own cave of Adulam experience. Who are you? What is your identity? Maybe you are used to be a top-tier frequent flyer program and flying first class, but you no longer have the privileges now. You are joining a normal queue for check-in without any priority boarding. You are seated at Starbucks at a corner hoping that nobody will see you and ask, why are you not in the VIP lounge? It is your own cave of Adulam experience. And this is the first level of encounter in regards to who you really are. What is your identity when everything is taken away? It is, isn't this how some of us will feel when we are no longer at the prime of our lives? Isn't it how we feel if we are no longer experiencing the perks of all that comes with the position that we hold? Isn't this how we feel if we are given a less significant role in the company? Why? Because we have identified ourselves with who we are with the position and the lifestyle that we live. It is easy for us to identify ourselves with the luxury and the lifestyle, the pinnacle of our success. It is the world definition of success. It is an identity that many pursue to attain and be associated with at the top of our achievements. Don't get me wrong, there's absolutely nothing wrong to enjoy the finest things in life, especially when we can afford it. However, we should not build an identity on it because we might not realize the challenge it will bring if our identity is being taken away in unforeseen circumstances. It will be the same struggle for our spouse and children if they have similar identity in worldly goods. In fact, some of the spouse will jump ship, especially when they know that they are on a sinking ship. It has happened on many occasions, especially those who look at marriage as a contract. The pride of life, when we boast of what we wear, where we eat, how we travel, where we stay, what we have and people whom we associate with in society. We are not mindful of this danger of having this as our identity when we are able to effortlessly have this luxury and lifestyle. We don't even think about it as a problem. We believe that we are the creator of our own destiny. However, when this identity based on the self-made man begins to fall or fail due to COVID-19 or any other curveball that comes into our life, then we will crumble. We are fearful of how man will look at us and treat us. Let me share with you what should be your identity so that it is sure, firm and secure. John 1.12 says, But as many as receive Him, to them He gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in His name. Praise the Lord! You and I have a new identity the moment we receive Jesus Christ into our hearts to be our Lord and Saviour. We are the children of the living God. Well, some might mock at this truth or accuse us of being too simplistic in our thinking because what this position is, that we have in Christ will not be able to bring home the bacon. Let me give, give an example. Let me share with you this reality. Let us use the trailer as an example. Ben Affleck in the movie is a leader of a department in the company. He was leading a comfortable life, lived in a house and had a good job. His entire identity was in his work and his lifestyle. Thus, he needed to maintain it to look successful. The reality is people who used to be our friends will slowly alienate us. We might not also want to show up among them until we find a job just in case that they ask us what and where we are working. Slowly, the mobile phones will stop ringing from friends and business associates. 
Maybe the people might need to lower his living standard in the area of housing, transport and leisure in order to cut costs. His whole identity that built around calling titles, cards, luxury and lifestyle comes crumbling down. It is miserable and depressive. It is very difficult to climb out of that valley of life because we, we are so used to associate our identity with, what we, with the things that have been taken away from us. We will find it very difficult to overcome the cave of Abdullam experience unless we rebuild our identity in Christ. Where we have been endowed with all the spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. It gives us a new identity and we should live out of this new identity. It gives us faith, confidence and a firm footing even when we are in the cave of Adulam experience in life. Now let's, let's build this foundation of who we are in Christ. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 1. Verse 3 to 7 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Just as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy without blame before Him in love. Having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to Himself according to the good pleasure of His will to the praise of the glory of His grace by which He made us accepted in the Beloved. In Him we have the redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. In Him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. One common question when we are going through the cave of Abdullam experience is, what have I done to deserve this? Is God punishing me? Is God against me? We feel rejected by man and by God when we are in the lowest point of our lives. Therefore, we need to have the correct image of how God looks at us, especially when we are alone in the cave of Adulam, in order to take steps to walk out of it. Don't stay in the cave of Adulam, but take steps to walk out of it. We will experience rejection in job application. We might even be shunned by people whom we are trying to reach out for help because there's nothing else that they are able to leverage on us. This is a time when we realize who our true friends are. Just like David, when he saw nobody, when he looked to his right, he was alone. You know, we struggle, we struggle because we want to be accepted and possibly get back to where we are and where we belong. I'm going to share with you how to stop struggling. The root of rejection is found in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve were booted out after they sinned against God. We are searching for acceptance and significance in this imperfect and broken down world. The sad news is the world will not be able to give us the security nor the correct identity. The only strong foundation for security is our place in Jesus Christ and what He thinks of us matter most in life. The thing is what we don't realize is everyone wants to feel accepted from the time we are born to the day we die. That's the reason why bonding with the newborn is so important so that the baby will feel secure. There is peer pressure when we are growing up, therefore we want to look good, be seen with the most happening group in school, be in the sports and talent club, and be invited to all the popular parties in school, regardless whether it is during junior or high school. When we want to do well, be recognized by our achievements and receive praises from people, nobody likes to be single when we are at a marriageable age when we do not have the gift of celibacy. We expect to be employed in a reputable company, have a good position and excel in a job. We like to be seen driving a good car, get driven around and live in a good apartment or bungalow in a well-known district. We have developed an identity for ourselves. We might experience meteorite rise in our career, but prayerfully, everything keeps in that way. But life has its interesting twists and turns. We also have the devil who comes to steal, kill and destroy. The last struggle will be the death at our deathbed where the where we will have, the fear will hit us whether we will be accepted by God. Let me share with you why the Lord has placed in my heart to share this sermon. Nothing is certain with COVID-19 development. Therefore, it is better to build and continue to remind each other through the word regarding how we should react, especially during uncertain times like this. One of the greatest concerns that people who are going through the cave of Adulam experience will be, what will people think of them or look at them when they are struggling. We, have, we need to have a paradigm shift from being concerned of what people think of us and choose to think of 
how God looks at us that matters most. That will give us the greatest security we will ever have in life and it doesn't change with the circumstances. In fact, we will be the strongest person to face any form of adversity in life when we have our identity in Christ and we need to have the urgency to build it into our children too. The general will of God tells us that we are blessed with all the spiritual blessings in the heavenly places the moment we are saved. Once upon a time, we were sinners who, are, who were destined for judgment and hell. He is a holy, just, and righteous God. Therefore, there's actually absolutely no way for any one of us to be able to draw near to God and even be accepted by Him based on our own strength and good works. However, it is the good pleasure of the Heavenly Father that we are saved and He has found a way for us to be accepted by Him. It is God's will that we are saved through the redemptive work and the blood of Jesus Christ. It is God's will that you are found to be hidden in Christ. It is the good pleasure of God for us to be His children. This is the only way to be accepted by Him. It is so comforting to know that we have been given the right to be ch the children of God. God has it in His plan for us to be accepted in the Beloved. We are accepted as children of God based on what Christ has done for us through the redemptive blood of Jesus Christ. The blood has completely washed away our sin and caused us to be hidden in Christ. Mind you, in David's day, David said that, you know, his sin is covered. He said, how good it is if the sin were to be completely washed away. Now, the Old Testament sacrificial system will only cover the sin tempor temporarily. But the blood of Jesus Christ washes away our sins from God forever. This is the only prerequisite for us to be accepted we will come to a position of rest from trying to gain acceptance before God based on what we have or have not done. We have been sealed with the Holy Spirit in our spirit man that we belong to God. This is your new identity. Amen? It should read like this in your life. What is your identity? People will begin to ask you, who are you? It might be weird, but it is true to say this. I'm a child of God. I'm a male, forgiven, washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Righteous, blameless, holy in Christ. I am accepted in the Beloved. He has forgiven me and, re and I have received the gift of righteousness. The seal of the Holy Spirit is in me as a confirmation that I'm a child of the living God. And when the last trumpet sounds, I'll be caught up in the air to meet Jesus Christ. It is during this moment when the corruption will put on incorruptible. The mortal will put on immortality. The thing of death has no more power over me because Jesus has died for me. Let me tell you, when you have this identity in Christ, no matter what comes into your life, you will know that you know that you know that nothing shall be able to separate you from the love of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. If God has chosen to love us and sees us in Christ, then nothing shall be able to separate us from Him. Our personal and temporal experience of the cave of Adullam will not be able to destroy us. He will lead you out of the cave of Adullam. Amen? Don't stay in the cave of Adullam. Walk out of the cave of Adullam by seeking God and acting out the instruction of the Lord. Verse 3 of 1 Samuel 22 says, Then David ran from there to Mizpah of Moab, and he said to the king of Moab, Please let my father and mother come here with you, till I know what God will do for me, he said. Now the prophet Gad said to David, Do not stay in the stronghold, depart and go to the land of Judah. So David departed and went into the forest of Hereth. I believe it would be wrong to portray that David had no emotion when he was going through this period of isolation, persecution and wrongful accusation, loneliness and uncertainty. Psalms 142 will give us a glimpse and some understanding of how he felt when he was hiding in a cave alone before the arrival of his family and the 400 men of war. Let's look at Psalms 142, verse 1 to 4. 1 to 4. Psalms 142, 1 to 4 says, I cry out to the Lord with my voice. With my voice to the Lord, I make my supplication. I pour out my complaint before Him. I declare before Him my trouble. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then you knew my path. In the way in which I walk, they have secretly set a snare for me. Look on my right hand and see, for there is no one who acknowledges me. Refuge has filled me. No one cares for my soul. David sounded depressed because his spirit was overwhelmed by the circumstances. He felt lonely, 
Seems that nobody cared for his well-being. He felt emotionally drained. Praise the Lord, God was David's refuge because he could not find anyone else who acknowledges him. He felt trapped, cornered, and believed that Saul had set a snare for him. He cried out earnestly to God and even complained about his situation. Verbalizing our distraught is a good emotional release vow so that it will set us on track for recovery. We are blessed to be able to call on the name of Jesus. John 16, 24 says, Until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. You know, in the New Testament, we are really blessed to be able to use the name of Jesus in our prayer. The whole of heaven stops the moment you use the name of Jesus in your prayer. And the other privileges that we have in 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Casting all your cares upon Him because He cares for you. Praise the Lord. God remained a faithful refuge when it seems everyone is far away from David as he took refuge in the cave of Adullam. He felt the lack of help from others. Therefore, we should come before God and cast unto Him all that we are anxious about in life and the circumstances that we, we are in because our la- lives matter to God. He cares for us. Can you imagine that He cares for your well-being spiritually, emotionally and physically? He cares about us and how He will provide for us too. He's the God of the how much more better than our earthly father. It is comforting as we read in 1 Samuel 22 that his family came to him when they heard that he was hiding in the cave of Adullam. The Jewish families are very closely knitted, so it wasn't just to hide from King Saul, but to bring comfort and support to David. I believe that you and I should also receive support from our family members and especially our spouse. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 10 to 12 says, For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. And a tree's full cord is not quickly broken. There is a special comfort that's brought about by family members when you are stressed out. The Bible tells us that our spouse is our helper, companion, and someone who keeps us strong, especially when we are connected with God together. Truly, a three-strand cord will not be easily broken. We will handle stress and face all circumstances as one flesh. We have one purpose, one goal, one spirit as a couple. Therefore, we need to pull together and remember that we are in a covenant relationship. It is good to share all our cares and worries with the soulmate of our lives so that we will be able to uphold each other in prayer and so so be a source of strength and encouragement when we are downtrodden. This is especially true when we are going through the cave of Adullam experience in life. Thirdly, God allowed 400 men who gathered around David to be a source of strength and encouragement to him. I, w- I believe that uh, God will also bring about people in the cell group to journey with you when you are going through the cave of Adullam experience. Amen? And this is something that we need to intentionally allow ourselves to join a cell group. David did not become frustrated, angry or disillusioned with God, but continued to remain faithful and had the right attitude towards him, even in the worst of circumstances and situation. In fact, David managed to recompose himself after he cried out to God. He took comfort in the presence of his family and members and got to know that Saul did not manage to kill them and also the presence of the 400 men. God will bring good people to support and undergird us in prayer. Therefore, when you are going through the cave of Adullam experience, don't be alone. Look out for your cell members, your friends to help you to journey with you. You can, call your, you can call the pastor, you can call me, you can call your cell leader, you can call your cluster leader, you can call people whom you trust to journey with you. Amen? And that's the blessing of being in the family of Jesus Christ. And then David said in Psalms 143 uh, verse 10, Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Your spirit is good. Lead me in the land of uprightness. You know, we're not supposed to stay in our cave of Adullam forever. We are to seek the will of God regarding what we should do at 
as the head of the house or the person who has the authority over our own lives if we are single. Seeking the will of God is a proactive step that needs to be done by the individual. Like I always mention, seeking the will of God will require us to consecrate our lives to God. Due to time constraint, I will not be able to go into the prayer of consecration, but I will strongly encourage you, if you are in, the, in this situation, at a fork in your life, may I encourage you to uh, go to our webpage, look for this sermon title, A Firm Footing, a sermon that I preached in January 2018 in order to help you to find out the will of God. Amen? It is when you know the will of God, just like when David sought the face of God to know what to do and what God's plan is for him, he left the cave of Adullam. Amen? So you will leave your cave of Adullam with the help of God. In conclusion, the key to surviving the cave of Adullam is to have a strong identity in Christ. It helps us to know that God is for us and not against us. We will be able to confide Dundee, seek the face of God, His will and a path out of the cave of Adullam. We have also learned the importance of having, fam having family members support us. The other form of support will come from cell group members and friends who will be able to encourage us during the cold, dark and lonely time in the cave of Adullam experience. The good news is, David didn't die in the cave, but he went on to do great exploit for God after he sought the face of God. You will also not stay in the cave of Adullam, you will walk out of the cave of Adullam and continue to great, do great exploit for God if you begin to change your identity to be in Christ, begin to see yourself as God sees you, begin to seek the face of God, know the will of God, and you will walk out of it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's bow our head and pray. As every head bow and every eyes close, I'd like to ask those of you who are listening to this sermon and you are not a Christian, you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour and you like to receive Jesus as your God and your Saviour today. I'd like to pray with you. I'd like to encourage you to pray this prayer together with me by repeating every sentence that I'm about to say right now. Say this, Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you for sending Jesus to die for me on the cross. Forgive me of my sin, for I'm a sinner. Come into my life today and be my Lord and be my Savior. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now, if you have prayed this prayer, I'd like to hear from you. My email is written at the bottom of this page. Please write to me so that I can uh, follow up with you by giving you a, a New Believers book and also a Bible. Right now, I'd like to take some time to pray for our church members. Father, I give you praise and thanks that your word has gone forth and it shall not return void before you. It shall accomplish all that you have purpose for it to do. Father, I pray for everyone, especially those who are going through their own personal cave of Adulam experience. I'd like to pray for those regardless whether they are youth, young adult, or married person. I pray that, Father, they will have their identity in Christ. They will begin to seek your face they'll begin to seek your will, they'll begin to be confident in you in order to walk out of their own personal cave of Adulam experience. So I, I speak blessing to their lives, Father. I pray that, Father, they will use the Word of God to manage the stress in their lives. I pray that, Father, they will quickly have a paradigm shift from having their identity to with the uh, things that they own and um, have in the lifestyle that they have in life to having their identity in Christ so that they will be firm, sure, and secure in their faith. Now may the love of the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.